woman goes missing in a mysterious manner after a retreat in, on Mount Elumdem. It is in the central region of the Republic of Cameroon. The pastor of the church is being detained in the nation's political capital in connection to the disappearance of that woman and the deepening socio-political and security crisis hitting the northwest and the southwest regions of the country progressively spills into localities in the center or rather the littoral and the west regions of the country some localities close to the border with the crisis hit regions of the country have been recording uh, some attacks and the re most recent one occurred in a pineapple company in Banga that has been set ablaze by suspected pro-independence uh, fighters and also in this newscast we shall go out of the country to talk about over three million persons who are believed to be affected by a massive disaster provoked by a tropical storm that has continued unfolding in Zimbabwe and of course Malawi and Mozambique. At least hundreds of persons are confirmed dead. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television Live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babli Jonathan. A pineapple production plant in Mbanga in the Mongo Division, littoral region of Cameroon, has been set ablaze. It is one of the latest uh, attacks in localities along the border with crisis hit northwest and southwest regions of the country attributed to uh, pro independence fighters. Unidentified armed men are said to have moved into that part of the littoral region to set that company ablaze. Details with Immaculate Fogwe. This is what is left after the pineapple production company at Note 3 in Banga subdivision of the Mongo division in the Littoral region was ravaged by flames. <laughs> The pineapple production company was attacked by unknown gunmen who are believed to have crossed into Banga from the southwest region of Cameroon. The gunmen equally set ablaze a vehicle used in transporting pineapples from the plantations. In an attempt to take away some of the workers, the military intervened to rescue the situation. Il n'y a pas de problème de ce côté de protection. Dis-moi simplement votre programme. Vo Armstrong, divisional officer of Banga, cautioned the victims on the importance of being conscious and vigilant. He equally assured them that this act will never repeat itself again as security measures will be intensified. Éveillé et vigilant. Moins de choses, c'est de nous donner l'information. C'est tout. It should be recalled that this is a fourth attack that the Mongo division is witnessing since the start of the Anglophone crisis. The attackers have not been clearly identified till now, but accusing fingers are pointing to armed men who are said to have moved into Mbanga in the Mongo division of the littoral region of the country from the crisis hit the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. And the people of the two Anglophone regions of the country have continued suffering as a result of the deepening crisis with continuous gun battles and of course killings, abductions, destruction of properties, setting a blaze of uh, villages, entire villages in the two Anglophone regions of the country. Boots Teller has more from Bamenda. In normal times, the journey between Bamenda and Kumbu in Bui Division would last not more than three hours. Now, it could take five hours and above. The few who now ply the Bamenda Kumbu stretch of the ring road told this reporter off camera that the journey is most often characterized by several stops, some of which last for hours. These stops are as a result of gun battles between the defense forces and gunmen, believed to be the separatist fighters 
who are very active in the area. Along the Ndabkumbu stretch of road, like other roads linking villages, subdivisions and divisions, these gunmen carry out checks by mounting roadblocks. The barricades are often dismantled by defense and security forces whenever they bomb into them. Oh, okay. About a week ago, one of such checkpoints mounted by the fighters between Babisi in Gokitunja Division and Jakiri in Bui Division of the Northwest Region was dismantled by elements of the Rapid Intervention Battalion. The fighters had also planted explosives. One went off, slightly affecting one of the vehicles. The others were dismantled before they could go off. As a result of several minutes of exchanges, a number of locally fabricated weapons were confiscated from the gunmen. In all, the inhabitants are those who suffer the most. They are being kidnapped and ransoms demanded, being killed, especially in the crossfires, Denied access to health care due to lack of means of transportation. They are the ones whose businesses are crumbling. They are being forced to live in homes out of their homes and under deplorable conditions while their properties are being looted and burned. This is just part of the sufferings affecting people of the Northwest region. They are praying and hoping for God's intervention in the crisis which has brought untold hardship and sufferings on day in the northwest and southwest regions in particular and Cameroonians in general. And abductions have continued in the two Anglophone regions of the Republic of Cameroon and the most recent case is that of uh, several students of the University of Boya who were picked up by unidentified gunmen in the stadium of the school. The students are players of the football team of the University of uh, Boya. They were took away by some unidentified men in the stadium of that school uh, not far from the main uh, campus notably around mile 16 neighborhood in Boya and the government is continuing with its measures in view of bringing an end to the uh, destruction and the killings going on in the northwest and southwest regions of the country notably within the framework of the acceleration of the ongoing decentralization uh, process and the bill on the putting in place of a regional council has now been tabled in the past Parliament that bill was tabled by government today in the ongoing mass session of parliament in the hemicycle and the members of Cameroon's lower house of parliament will now examine that bill ahead of regional as well as municipal and legislative elections announced this year by the president of the republic. On to something else now. A pastor has been detained in Cameroon's political capital, Yaoundé, in connection to the mysterious disappearance of a member of his church, a woman who disappeared three weeks ago after a retreat on Mount Elumdem. It is, of course, in the central region of the country, and the 45-year-old woman has left behind two uh, children. In Ekinos Television went investigating, and these are uh, details. So that's story compiled by for me Armstrong Sander. Rain of tears falling heavily at the Ekono Court of First Instance in Yaoundi. The tears are shed for Mweju Zhang Dag, whose family here present do not know her whereabouts for close to three weeks now. The lady went missing under controversial circumstances during an all-night prayer session organized at Mount Elumdem in Bankomo subdivision, few meters away from Yawundi. According to Mwejo Zhang Dak's senior brother, Zhang Dak left the house for an excursion at about 7 a.m. one fateful Saturday on the demands of her church pastor. She and other Christians arrived at the prayer mountain in Bankomo at about midday. 
les prières du soir. At night, they went on hitch free with singing, dancing and prayers that lasted till 4 a.m. Carol, a friend to the missing Mwejo Zhang Dao, recount what happened that fateful night of second, breaking the third of March 2019, when everything changed. At a time in the night, she left where she was sleeping, came and was sleeping close to me. We we're all sleeping and after some time, she woke up, hit my mouth and hit the Bible twice and I thought that she was going to pray as usual. Because of fatigue, I continued sleeping, but when I woke up in the morning, I could not see her anymore. Le matin quand je me lève, je ne la vois pas que mais elle n'est pas encore rentrée. The pastor and Christians launched a search which went fruitless for several hours. After a more serious search, they made a shocking discovery. 20 meters away from the prayer site were her dresses and all she had on her except her Bible. The family only learned of the strange disappearance four days later. The pastor, here dressed in white, took upon himself to continue the search in hidings using his vehicle, the same vehicle he used in transporting the ten pilgrims to Mount Elumdem in Bankumu. He will finally fall into the darkness of police elements from the 15th police district in Yaoundi following a complaint deposited by family members of the victim. He and some of his Christians were questioned by police officials, though no trace of Mweju Zhang died. The missing lady and other 50 Christians were members of this church, Mission pour la Restauration Divine, a branch of Mevi Park in Yaoundi. The Pentecostal church situated at the Ekundum neighborhood of Yaoundi is actually at the pastor's residence. It is a common phenomenon in Cameroon's political capital, Yaoundi, where private residences are transformed into church buildings. The place is deserted since the incident occurred. The gate locked and visitors can only look without understanding from a tiny hole. It is almost three weeks that Mwejo Zhang Dak went missing mysteriously. Her mother, siblings and her two children are unconsolable. I lastly saw my mother on the 26th of February when I came to inform her that exams in the university were about to begin. My mother is a restaurant owner. We work hard together every day. She was in good health and they are telling me that she is nowhere to be found. The family is then accusing the church pastor and the wife who is equally a preacher. They are taste to have contacted the pastor and wife who asked them to wait in prayer and faith for the return of Mwejo Zhang Dad. The matter is now in the hands of judicial officials and the family of the victim who believe that the pastor has the key to the mystery, expects that justice be done. While waiting, Mwejo Zhang Dak remains missing since March the 2nd, breaking March the 3rd, 2019. A group of individuals stormed the head office of the Cameroon Water Utilities Company, Camwater, here in Douala, protesting against the inadequate and epileptic water supply in the areas of residence. A case in point in this newscast is the Bepanda Bonabo neighborhood where there hasn't been a constant and adequate supply of portable water for over six years today. In Osinazi has more. It seems unbelievable but certain. Bepanda Bonabo in Douala has gone for six years without portable water. According to this resident representing the quarter in this association, grouping representatives from other affected neighborhoods. We have not yet get water for six years now for Bonabo. She says the result is that they contract waterborne diseases as they consume dirty water from unsafe sources. For solve other problems. 
reason why they stormed Kamwata, the Cameroon Water Utility Corporation head office in Bonanjo Douala to table their grievances. <laughs> While at the Kamwata premises, the association's leader met with the director general who said, Now so, that it be difficult for The problem cannot be instantly redressed because of numerous issues faced by the corporation. If you do now so. The director general, however, assured the population of the six quarters deprived from potable water for different long periods of time. They say that now so, they we go for the place. Consultation will be made and a solution to the water crisis reached. And then we will make so many time to solve all the feedback which will be channeled to the people they represent. Arms are crossed with expectation. The pledge comes soonest for the airfield tabs to supply them with the precious liquid. Coming up, Smart Jigan Gebre takes a look at the skyrocketing prices of basic commodities on markets across the Republic of Cameroon. Basic market commodities fill market spaces in Cameroon's economic capital. Buyers are limited. This is so because the prices of raw food in the market have witnessed a significant increase. This buyer tells us fish has become very scarce in the market as everything is now expensive. Even rice, the price has gone up to 22,000 francs CFA. The absence of buyers in the market due to the hike in the market is affecting every other trader. We now find it difficult doing business because the profit we used to make is now divided into 10, adding up to the price hike we are experiencing on all commodities. Rice, which is the most consumed food in Cameroon, has now experienced a price hike of 5 thousand francs CFA. According to this trader, we started witnessing changes in the price of rice since October from 1,000 to 2,000 and now 5,000 francs increase. Apart from rice, coal store owners are also witnessing the changes as several prices for fish have also noticed a hike with Makiro witnessing an increase of 3,000 francs CFA. A 21 kilogram carton of Makiro moved from 27,000 to 30,000 francs, which implies there is a 3,000 francs increase. This has been on for more than one year now. The increment weakness in prices of basic commodity goods in our market, several of those we talk to say is as a result of the present sociopolitical impasse that the country is passing through. Out of Cameroon, at least three million persons are now believed to be affected by a massive disaster provoked by a tropical storm uh, that is sweeping across some uh, African countries, notably Mozambique, Zimbabwe and Malawi. Hundreds are now confirmed dead. Thousands are awaiting rescue and it seems that the full scale of the tragedy may not be known for months, cut see your news. Struggling through the mud to find food and water, the trail of Cyclone Idai stopping everyone in their tracks. The storm swept inland at speeds of up to 170 kilometers per hour last week, hitting Mozambique, then its inland neighbors Zimbabwe and Malawi. It's nature showing its strength, and we need to accept that and find strength ourselves after the rain to stand up and move forward. Turning streets into rivers, the floodwaters have taken over nearly 300 square kilometers of land in central Mozambique. The Red Cross say at least 400,000 people have been made homeless in the area. 
I was with my children inside our home talking because it was raining, and then we heard the mountain exploding, and then the water started flowing through the streets and reached our house when we had to run away. Air rescuers have been picking up stranded survivors where they can. A Red Cross worker said the full cost of the storm in all meanings is only just emerging. The World Food Programme is rushing food and other assistance to large numbers of desperate people. And Red Cross workers in Baira are calling it the worst humanitarian crisis in Mozambique's history. Freddie Tennyson, Euronews. That's it for the first part of this newscast. Coming up next, Talking Point. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in Talking Points. We are receiving Tanto Emmanuel. He is the president of the Bamendankwe Development and Cultural Association. Bamendankwe is one of the localities in the heart of the two Anglophone regions of the country hit by socio-political crisis. Bamendankwe, of course, is in the northwest region of the country. Tanto Emmanuel, you're welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Babila. When was the last time Mr. President went back home? Well, uh, the last time, if you remember, was uh, in December. I was back home to see uh, myself the situation back in the oh. my village. All right. Why have you not been going home frequently? Uh, for personal uh, for my personal reasons, uh, maybe because of my job. Uh, it, don't, uh, it doesn't permit me going back home at the, all the times. Mm, the security challenges? Uh, well, the issue? security ch challenges are there, but uh, we, you can't uh, run away from your home because of security ch challenges. We are some of those that are going back home to encourage people not to fall into this uh, unwanted uh, atmosphere, trying to uh, uh, sensitize the youth, especially, on how to live with this situation. What is the state of the socio-political atmosphere in Bamenda Kwe today? Well, I think in Bamendankwe, as uh, any other place, we just need to be careful because you don't know when uh, th things can happen. And uh, the, security, the security around the place is quite tight, as usual. And, uh, you know, Bamendankwe hosts the seat of administration. So uh, the, the situation in Bamendankwe is not as, as worse as uh, we find it in other places. Mm. So um, how are the people? coping with uh, the security challenges, with the difficulties of moving around, with the operation goes down, the tight security, and so on and so forth. Very difficult to go by. I can assure you, Mr. Babila, it's not easy for my people because uh, in terms of development, everything is completely stopped down. It's not possible for people to go around as usual. And you know when uh, you have to go back before the, you, you enter the house before your chicks, you know what it means because uh, at, at this at this juncture, this business has reduced almost to seventy-five percent loss. So business has been grounded in in exactly. Bamenda and like the rest of the northwest and southwest regions of the country. What about frequent gun battles, killings, and abductions going on in the midst of the crisis? Well, uh, we have uh, witnessed some of those cases, but uh, for now, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's calm. But uh, unfortunately, we lost one of our brothers uh, just, a few days, uh, uh, just a few days ago. He was caught uh, during a gun battle uh, at about uh, 9 p.m. And uh, it has also been advised that uh, they should keep at home. Unfortunately, some of us uh, sometimes don't really uh, uh, seek to what uh, uh, the advice they give us. And uh, he was a victim and he died. Several persons, hundreds of thousands, have fled their homes. Some are in Nigeria, some are in parts of the littoral west and other regions of the country. Bamenda Kwe, some villages have practically been emptied today. What is the situation in Bamenda Kwe? Are the people moving out of their villages? Uh, some are moving out and some have, some, some have stayed back. I cannot uh, assure you that uh, people are leaving Bamenda Kwe as all are places. I uh, think uh, Bamendankwe is more a bit safe, safe, safe about the, like than the other places uh, because uh, you go back home, the people, the businesses are moving not at 100 percent, but at least the people are there. All right, you are the president of the Development Association, the Development and Cultural Association of Bamendankwe. How has the Anglophone crisis affected your development efforts this far? Well, it has affected the Development Association, the association in many uh, aspects. Uh, it's not easy to go back home and organize uh, uh, 
uh, normal uh, ceremonies as usual. But uh, notwithstanding, we have always tried to uh, bring the people together once in a while and talk to them and uh, caution them, especially on how to move when in, in times of crisis like this. All right. What are other uh, activities or other efforts that you're making to remedy the situation or to mitigate the damaging impacts of the Anglophone crisis in your community? Well, uh, we are trying to organize, especially with the youth, so we always bring them together, organize seminars that we can educate them on how to live at uh, this uh, particular moment, uh, try to orientate them on what uh, certain activities that could also make them, uh, put them, be, uh, let them be active. Because most of, the, most of them who are supposed to be at the job house, especially in town, they, they, don't, they don't more go to town. And you know what uh, that means, meaning that uh, they are idle. And you know idleness should be the home of the devil. Uh, so we, uh, we organize seminars, we even go as far as uh, bringing, uh, bringing the youths to work in hand in hand in, in quarters. We organize, uh, like the youths are working back home now, uh, on Mondays and some other days they organize in their quarters to clean the quarter, clean, make sure that every place is clean. Uh, that is one of the measures that we've taken to, to see that uh, the youths are really, really occupied at this uh, particular time. There is an event that will be coming up on the 30th of oh. Yeah, we are, we, we are organizing a fundraising. Uh, actually, the Baminankwe Development and Cultural Association intends to bring up a, a multipurpose center. We intend to bring this building center in the nearest, uh, in, in, the day, in the days ahead. So we are organizing uh, a fundraising in Yaoundé that will raise funds towards this, uh, towards this uh, multipurpose center that we are expecting to put on in our community. What is the essence of a multipurpose center at this uh, particular point in time when uh, the socio-political climate in the village remains very tense? Yeah, uh, the, it's very important because uh, the crisis will not stop a village from developing. You know, uh, Bameka for us is like a unifying factor. And uh, when, you want to be, when you want to develop, you must keep your heads hard. We can't sit down and uh, just complain that the crisis are going on and not doing anything. To us, Bameka is like a hospital, and it, it must function. Bameka must function in order, because if we stay behind, when things will be okay, we'll still start from where we stopped. So it's better we try to put in everything that it takes us to keep moving. A, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. That's what we're doing. And that is the step, that is the first step that you uh, will be taking on the 30th of uh, March? 30th of March, uh, 2019 in Yaoundé. We are having this grand fundraising that is going to bring all the other branches of the regions. We, uh, we have these branches, Douala, Yaoundé itself, uh, Boya, Limbe, Kumbab, Bafusam, uh, even the other branches abroad. Some of them are going to send their contributions. So we are actually uh, inviting all the Bamidanque elites who are in Yaoundé to come out on that 30 and give us uh, their, full, and give us their full support. But the question that remains unanswered is how you are going to carry on this project in the present context? Uh, this, this project is a, is a, is a long-lasting project, so we must, I have, I've told, I've, as I said, we have to start from somewhere. And we can't keep waiting until this, uh, this crisis go over before we talk about our projects. Since Bameka is a development situation, it's a continuous process. And it must keep on until when things, no, it must not stop when things are not moving. It has to be on and continue to be on when things will be okay. It will go faster than for us to sit down now and say there are crises, we're not doing anything. Tanto Emmanuel, President of Bamedka, thanks for coming. Thank you, Mr. Babila. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. That's it for today.